Oh, ha, me and everyone. How are you all doing today? And welcome to another Rabbit Ramble. Today we are going to be tackling the incredibly fun topic of... Uh, this has been over the past month and a half. It's been quite a bit of a stir on the social media in all kinds of various ways. People are being in favor of it, people are being against it, and... It has been quite the uh, crap show, to be honest. Man, because people generally don't want to talk about it uh, in a nice, normal way. So, um, saying that, um, let's see what my take on it is, because I'm pretty sure there will be uh, some issues with people hating it as well. But I like to think that I have a bit of a more of a middle of the road uh, opinion on it. So maybe that will, uh, I'm not sure, but maybe that will help uh, uh, some people be like, yeah, you know what? The dumb bunny might have a point there. Anyway, so uh, for those that are not so familiar with uh, the terms ESG and DEI, or as some people like to call it, uh, woke, um, it pretty much comes down to ESG, it stands for environment, uh, society, and governmental. That's pretty much used by investment companies. So, kinda say, hey, if, you, uh, if your company uh, takes these things into account, and all that, then we can give you some more, uh, we can give you better investment stuff and all that. And DEI stands for diversity, equity and inclusion, which are generally words um, set by uh, companies that uh, provide counseling on those to other companies, mostly in various sources of media, I guess. Well, to start things off real quick, uh, my opinion on this is kind of, well, really simple. Uh, they are tools. It's quite simple. They are tools and depending on how they are used, it can be really good or it can be really bad. It's that simple. If there is a company or a person that is using them wrong, then the outcome is really horrible. If they are being used right, uh, you won't see anyone complaining because it's not something new to, uh, it's not something new at all. It's just that uh, over the past decade or so, it has become more obvious. I think that uh, that's a right, good way to say it. It's become more obvious that there have been some uh, bad actors that have been trying to use this as a way to get some easy money, to be honest, and deliver kind of crappy content for, for it, so, and if you complain about it, it was kind of like, nah, we're just doing it for, uh, for, for a cause. And, I mean, people, if you want people to pay for your cause, you need to deliver a good product that is worthy of that cause. So that's just my two cents in a nutshell. Continuing on, so, um, let's come up with a really good, uh, example in my opinion. Um, last year in Guilty Gear Strive, which is Kinda like the fourth section of the Guilty Gear franchise for those of you. There have been more games, but it's hard to explain. It's fighting games, so you know how it works. Um, one game comes out, and a few years later, a uh, renewed edition comes out with new characters in it and uh, certain systems uh, um, redone and all that. So, but uh, Strife is the latest, uh, latest game in the Guilty Gear series, and one of the characters that got released in a DLC wave was Bridget. Now, uh, prior to Strife, Bridget has always been a male character cross-dressing as a female because of story reasons. And to quickly summarize that, uh, Bridget was born as a pair of twin boys in, in the village she was born into. Uh, that was seen as a bad omen, so either uh, his parents were needed to either uh, dispose of him in a way or... Just hide the fact that he was a boy. And they opted for the latter, raised him as a girl. And once uh, Bridges became of age, he kind of wanted to prove that uh, about uh, the, the superstition about the uh, twin boys being a bad omen is just BS and prove some manliness. And that was pretty much his story prior to, uh, to Guilty Gear Strive. And a lot of people resonated with it. Um, he was pretty much an icon for fanboys and all that. So. And uh, he was probably one of the earlier fanboys to actually gain some, uh, actually, uh, actually, 
how do I say the word? Uh, repute, I think. Anyways, uh, so that happened, and then in Strife, uh, when he got introduced into DLC, and the the story for it um, uh, turned him from a fanboy into a trans female, which is not an issue in itself. Problem is, it was just really badly written. I've seen the story, and oh boy, was it badly really written. This that could have been handled in so many different ways, and that would all, that would all have been be better than what we've gotten so far. I mean, if they really wanted to make a, a trans girl, then this not that was not the way in my opinion. But like, they could have easily just um, have him go along along with me, do um, some more girly things, and have um, discover. Hey, you know what? This is kind of fun. Maybe uh, I'm not meant to be a boy and I'm meant to be a girl and all that, but the way they went about it, I'm not sure who wrote it, but it was bad. It was really bad in my opinion, and uh, I'm sure people will disagree with me on that, but the writing for Bridges' story in Strive was just bad. Whoever wrote it should be ashamed of himself in my opinion, but... That is uh, one of the uh, bad uh, examples of it, uh, but there have been plenty of good examples of it as well, I mean... The thing is, um, the way how you do good uh, DEI in any kind of media is pretty much uh, make it so that it isn't visible. The moment you are starting to be like, oh no, we have this and that, and uh, we have these kind of characters and those kind of characters and blah, 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 all these labels popped up, you're doing it wrong. Because at that point, you are not doing it because of, hey, we want these kind of characters in here. Because uh, th those are cool to have. Then you are just doing it. Hey, we have these labels in here. Buy our stuff. Because uh, you can now... Uh, it's um, pretty much great talking that uh, the, the, the characters are nothing more than uh, stop being characters and well, pretty much become marketing material. That's all, all there is to it in my opinion. And that's kind of what has been happening uh, to certain franchises and all that. And... Well, lately we have uh, Stella Blade. Uh, Stella Blade has been also quite a thing. Um, it looks great. I don't have a PlayStation 5, so I haven't been able to play the demo yet. So I have seen uh, some of the gameplay of it, and it looks like a fun game, actually. Graphic wise, it also really looks really nice, and uh, the work they have done with Eve. I cannot complain there. Uh, they used a 3D scan of an actual uh, Korean model as a basis. Uh, of course, there was some touch-up, maybe a few that went a bit um, far, but overall, I think it looks like pretty nice. The monsters look great, um, the overall world looks pretty great, the combat looks great. So, at least from what I've seen from the, the gameplay videos I've seen. So, And yeah, then you have people going like... I mean, back when uh, the first trailer was released in what was it, 2019, I think, people were all like, like oh no, this uh, the main character looks so unrealistic, and then it turns out to be actually based on an actual real human. And then there, uh, the, and then, then you start seeing the shifting goalposts. Oh no, but um, it's, uh, I mean, you know what I mean. I think most of you pe people that have, are watching this right now have probably seen the discourse and... I'm probably familiar with all the stupidity around. <laughs> Seriously, if people were just willing to not just uh, stand up on a soapbox and call each other uh, at each other from the, uh, the other side of the square, then uh, a lot of these issues would probably not be even be a thing. But people are stupid, and social media seems to be make them even stupider. But <clears throat> just I've been pretty much a lifelong gamer, and seeing all this. Games are a hobby. If you play games, you do it because you enjoy them. Um, there are so many genres and so many variations of what you can do in it. Even within a genre, there are so many variations. There, that's, that's why there are so many subgenres of uh, as well. And I really don't see why why we cannot all have our little games and be happy about it because it's always oh no, this game is coming out. I don't like it. Hey, let's read on the internet. Let's get angry. Let's make 10,000 videos about how this game absolutely sucks, even though I will never play it because I don't like it. And that goes for both sides, because both sides, uh, both uh, extremes of the... are just absolutely stupid. There, I said it. Like, both of them are reaching so far, they go 180 and just uh, come back at each other at, at the same point of stupidity. I'm sorry, but if you are part of that group, yeah, I said it. You're stupid. You're an idiot. 
You're getting way too worked up over a simple hobby that people are meant to enjoy. Sure, it has, got, it has grown quite a bit and there have been more and more people coming in. And yes, that's where the inclusivity, inclusivity comes from. But inclusivity does not mean that everyone has to like every single game that has to come out. I don't like first person shooters. Do you hear me complaining about how first person shooters should be uh, all be uh, banned? Because whatever stupid reason I can come up with. No, because I know people are enjoying it. And even though I don't enjoy them, I want people to enjoy their, uh, the, the games they do like. And that's kind of the main issue here. The issue is not the ESG. The issue is not the DEI. It's uh, that people are trying to use, uh, use them as... Uh, as weapons against the other side and vice versa as well because uh, hmm, people are stupid there's so much choice in gaming and there should be and if there's something you don't like just uh, don't play it don't buy it and if enough people buy it then hey it might get a sequel if enough people don't buy it and it's uh, considered flop it won't get a sequel and that kind of tells on uh, what people would want if you start throwing hissy fits over on uh, on social media, you know what? I think you're uh, you're dumb. Yeah, I think you're dumb. I think you're absolutely dumb if you throw a hissy fit over a video game that you don't like. <laughs> what is the point, really? I mean, seriously, what do you want? Do you want every game to be catered to? Hey, really? You know what? I've got a, I've got analogy for it. At least I think of it. Let's say you have a uh, you you have a uh, buffet where you invite 100 people to, but the condition is um, every person gets to say uh, one thing that is, what they don't like they that gets taken away from the buffet. It doesn't matter what reason they have for it. It just gets taken away. So um, you go the buffet, everything is there. Now the first person that comes in is like, you know what? I don't like meat. All the meat dishes get taken away. Okay, so now we have fish, um, maybe uh, fowl, and uh, veggies, and and uh, fruits, I guess, and all the stuff. Oh, the second person comes, oh, I am lactose intolerant. Well, there go all the dairy products. And you can go on. Uh, at some point, uh, if you give everyone a say in what every single thing has to be, then you get some really bland stuff that no one likes. And that is... I don't know what, is going, what, what some people seem to want at this point. Like... They want every game to be exactly the same uh, to the exact, and that's the point with standardization. Standards are good when it comes to stuff like uh, tools or equipment, because that means that hey, you can put one thing on pretty much everything else in the same category. When it comes to uh, creative stuff like video games, art, comics, movies, books, and you want standardization in that, um, that's not does not work that way. You cannot standardize creativity because then it starts being creative and it just becomes, uh, well, we just have to fill this mold with something new because it doesn't work that way. If you want good quality uh, products in uh, that require creativity, let the creative people do their thing. Don't let, uh, don't meddle with it, especially not uh, by dumb but that uh, are just trying to make money off it because those generally don't know what creativity is. They know how to work numbers, but creativity. Now, uh, one of the reasons I am actually talking about it, um, as I said, uh, it has been quite a month uh, or a month or and a half by at this point. And really, I think most of you have seen the uh, notorious uh, 2019 panel of uh, the Sweet Baby Inc. CEO, where she was going like, well, um, if you want us to hire us, go tell your uh, go tell your supervisor if he doesn't want to go. Go have a chat with your marketing team and uh, and just terrify them. You know that is already like pretty much mob behavior. Well, there's her. well, there's her. Um, you have a fine store here. Wouldn't want to have it burned down now, would it? Uh, like, let's see if someone uh, accidentally dropped a Molotov cocktail in there. Maybe you should pay us uh, to help protect you from that. Yeah. See, those are the kinds of people I'm talking about when it comes to uh, bad DEI. Those are the ones that are in it for the money and not for the cause. Otherwise, if you are really in it for the cause, you wouldn't need to threaten people. 
Uh, that's not even the worst part of the poor part of that uh, of that whole panel. Uh, I mean, she goes on a rant about uh, how she was when she was playing Mass Effect and she ha- got to make her own character and then realized, oh hey, this is really cool with my own character and all that. And then when she wanted to uh, call up a, uh, a friend of hers, where she was like, oh, I want to do, and then realized that the friend probably had a different experience in hers, and she was like. Well, that won't do. I need to, uh, everyone needs to have this experience that I, I mean, that's literally taking away choice from people. And that's always a bad thing. Taking away choice is a bad thing. That is never a good thing. Taking away choice is um, a horrible thing. So don't do that. Like, I really don't see the reasoning in there. It's just so it's really frustrating me to see that. Especially uh, after how the whole, whole thing blew up in the first place. Considering that it was one of her employees that tried to uh, stifle free speech. Because having a negative opinion on something is apparently harassment. I mean, I guess I'm harassing them at this point. Because I'm, I'm talking out against them. The thing is, I don't think DEI overall is a bad thing, though. It's just people like uh, the ones that work at Sweet Baby Inc., for example, are just not good representatives of them. Because it, there has been really good uh, stuff that has been happening, but uh, those that generally gets shoved under the rug. Because uh, the people that are in favor of DEI generally say, well, you're just not doing enough. And the SpongeBob meme. But uh, as I said, it's. This is also going to be a longer rebel, I already see, but it's just it's just something that uh, gaming is a hobby that I've held there for a long time, and it's also part of why I uh, went into streaming. Actually, um, it was not my first choice, but I always wanted to do something again. Streaming was is actually has been a lot of fun for me, and seeing some does discourse like this where people are just trying to take away choice, which it which is my main point here. It's not about whether a uh, game uh, has DEI in it or something or anything like that. It's just more, if you take away the choice, if you don't want... Uh, I'm fine with people not wanting to play a game like Senran Kagura because anime titties. That's absolutely fair. Don't play it then. But don't be like, well, I don't want to play it, so uh, it shouldn't exist. Because there are people that are willing to play it. And if you don't agree with that, don't play it and move on. Look somewhere else for a different game that you might like. And you often see then, well, um, I would like it if it didn't have this and this in it. Y- yeah, well, look for a similar game. I mean, um, there are plenty of Musou games out there that don't have that kind of stuff that Senran does. So, um, what's the issue? You have a choice and you are trying to be uh, upset that that, that uh, a choice you can make th- that doesn't uh, affect anyone else. And you want it to f- affect everyone else because if you if don't play, no one should. Um, I, I don't know. I really don't see the logic. I don't see the logic in that way of thinking. Uh, no, I really don't see it. And that's just, it's really weird for me. It's, I just, I just cannot get my mind around how people like that uh, work. And it's just the opposite way as well. Like the dude that blew a casket over, uh, was it Starfield? I think that uh, Bethesda game, that uh, the Bethesda space game. That Starfield had pronouns in it. Yeah, okay, fine. If it has pronouns in it, what's the issue? No need to uh, get an aneurysm over it. Like, that dude absolutely looked like a freaking dumbass. And, uh, I mean, I, se- I seriously don't get why people don't want to take away choice because it's not their choice. Uh, there are plenty of games on both sides that you can play and are able to play. And uh, if one thing is not of your uh, satisfaction, you can come on it and play another one. So, uh, yeah, um, that's kind of it for now. Uh, Pretty much a longer ramble longer than usual, so uh, thank you all for listening. Um, if you like my rambles here, please leave a like, subscribe, and uh, maybe leave a comment as well what your thoughts about this art on this topic. And uh, well, I will see you all in the next ramble. Stay safe, sweet dreams, bye bunny, and bye bye.